crime fighter and now Member of Parliament, Ian Cameron has been elected chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Police in Parliament. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Chris. The first time I interviewed you, you were still at Action Society. The last time I interviewed you, you had joined the then opposition Democratic Alliance, and now you're in government. What a journey and what a transition. How does it feel? It, uh, it it doesn't feel yet, so so uh, it it I think it will it will get some getting used to. Um, look, I think there's a there's a part of of me, especially now with the police committee, and we can talk about that uh, shortly. But um, I think we'll always be uh, because of the strong opposition nature. Um, it makes it slightly easier to hold people accountable. Um, and to really look at things from the outside as well, which is a good way of doing introspection, right? So, um, but but nevertheless, uh, I'm I'm very grateful to be in the position that I'm in. Um, it's a huge honour for me, and I'm really looking forward to uh, um, to taking on the challenge. Ian, who else was in the running for chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Police? So, Chris, yesterday when the Portfolio Committee got together, uh, obviously we had no chairperson yet, and uh, they then asked for nominations. Uh, I was then nominated, and uh, and no one else was nominated. So it was uncontested. Um, uh, my nomination was seconded, and shortly after that, it was then official that I would be elected as the, the Portfolio Committee chair. And uh, we, we literally started with, I mean, Talk about throwing you in at the deep end. We our first meeting was seven and a half hours, uh, and uh, it was welcomed. We I was welcomed, but the committee too was was welcomed uh, uh, in a in a very positive way by the new minister of police as well. Uh, the national commissioner and his team uh, were all were also there, uh, and then of course the head of the Hawks, uh, Ipid and Sira too. So it was it was quite a uh, quite a first meeting, and we'll talk about the technicalities of that too shortly. But um, it it was it was positive, as I said, uncontested, and um, very grateful. So all the parties uh, uh, were in favour. Yes, yes, uh, of course. I mean, NK and and EFF uh, uh, did did uh, did push me a little bit during the the sitting. Uh, but it was it was still positive and it was constructive from all parties. Uh, it was very interesting to see the dynamic, and I've heard about it before. But it was really good to see the the changing dynamics once you step into a committee. It's almost as though a lot of the politicking disappears and it becomes an issue of community safety, an issue of policing, an issue of accountability. Um, and uh, and there was not one entity. Uh, or party or person in that uh, sitting yesterday that didn't ask valid and important questions and that didn't mention valid and important points. Uh, And the the contribution from the police and the other entities that were there um, were, 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 were quite good. I mean, they did their presentations and so on, but it was, it was fantastic to see, how a portfolio committee can actually work and can actually hold people accountable. Because I think it is something that that kind of got a little bit lost. Um, and it's not, uh, I don't say it as criticism, but it is something that a lot of South Africans lost interest in portfolio committees because I think they, they kind of felt it was just a presentation mechanism, whereas it's actually an oversight and uh, accountability mechanism. Um, and and with something like police, I mean, the 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 immense responsibility that we have, and and power in the in a positive sense that we have to really ask critical questions and to hold the relevant people accountable is is spectacular, and it's something that we need to take very very seriously. What exactly is your job description? So, um. I think it's it's quite broad. Um, let's first talk about what the scope is of the um, of this portfolio committee. So it obviously includes the South African Police Service, which obviously then includes the Hawks, 
um, so DPCI, so um, all priority crime investigation, etc. Then I put the the independent police investigative directorate, then the uh, police civilian secretariat, and then of course CIRA, the private security uh, regulating authority. So, so those are all the bodies that basically um, fall under this uh, umbrella. Um, so you can imagine it, it has a significant portion of union involvement. It's got a significant portion of uh, NGO uh, uh, and uh, an NPO involvement. And uh, uh, this, the, the, the whole non-profit uh, sector uh, plays a significant role in, in whistleblowing, combating crime, etc. In, in South Africa. And, and therefore my job to a large extent I'll get to the parliamentary specifics now but my job to a large extent is to be able to give those entities a platform to hold the necessary people to account it's important for them to create those platforms for them to be able to give their input on important decisions that are made we have to consider uh, legislation bills um, that that need to be passed or not for that matter Um and I think specifically for me as an individual, it's important that uh, I have to obviously be as objective as possible. You play a, an important role in in not choosing sides. You don't go and sit there and you put on a political party hat or an NGO hat. Uh, you go and sit there not as an activist either, although in my heart I think I'll always be uh, a, a little bit of an activist with regards to crime especially. Um, but uh, once you sit there, everyone needs to have the fair chance to be able to say what they need to say or ask what they need to ask, and then obviously give opportunity for the relevant people to to give the answers to those questions or comments. Um, uh, so I've, I've summarized it very basically. I, I think a key part of this, as a as a simple example. And these are all questions that we are aiming to raise uh, very soon, and and we've already um, the team is already busy uh, uh, doing the necessary to to send letters. But for example, to ask that uh, specific cases, why have they taken two or three years with specific murder cases and nothing has happened? So um, soon I'll share more about the details of those cases. But um, today we already sent several uh, uh, requests for those letters to be sent within the next week or so to ask why have these cases been taking so long um, and 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 if the existing unit or detective or whoever is working on that case is not doing the uh, an adequate job then it needs to be transferred to someone that can do the job properly something that we're busy with at the moment and this was a sitting yesterday was specifically regarding the the budget for the for the coming uh, uh, year or two and 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 how we can clearly see the um, the deficiencies in terms of resource allocation, where we still don't seem to understand or see that government understands how important it is that we need more detectives or that IPID needs more investigators. Um, I mean, IPID has almost 180 investigators for the entire country. It's physically impossible. They've got an average of 350 cases each in IPID. Uh, and it's similar to detectives in the South African police service. So the pressure is immense. And then the core, core, core uh, thing for me, um, and you know my heart in terms of of, uh, of of victims of crime and and being there for them and supporting them. But something that I feel we miss so often is the support to good police on the ground because hardly anyone speaks about that. Their psychological well-being, the stress that they work under, the lack of resources. And the fact that they keep on going. And I must really tell you that the messages of support that I got in the last 24 hours after the election from police members has been completely overwhelming. From cops that I've never spoken to in my life um, that also somehow got my number. And I've just been inundated with messages of support from them saying, saying thank you for letting us be heard. And uh, that is one of the single biggest motivations for me is to to work harder because if they are able to hang in there, surely we can do. What, as chairperson, will be your priorities? 
So resource allocation is crucial for me. Obviously, um, uh, the budget needs to be passed now. We're at a point where it's very difficult to really make uh, amendments, and, and obviously, it's from a previous executive. And um, uh, but we've, we're already indicating in our reports that will be released to the committee tomorrow. I think it will be public soon as well. Um, uh, we, we actually just completed, or I just completed the, the draft now. Um, uh, from yesterday's committee and we've already indicated that in the near future um, we would need to consider amending the budget in order to make sure that the police have the right resource allocation in the right places. Uh, some things that came up was the, um, the, the, the consistent appointment or the constant rather appointment of, of senior officers where they are not necessarily needed. We've got an extremely bloated management of the South African Police Service and I'm not convinced that it is a priority and we could rather use that money to support members on the ground. Um, so that's one one very simple example um, uh, is, is resource allocation and so too for IPID. Uh, then a, a core responsibility is to question uh, specific cases um, that I see as, as important that I think have a national influence or impact. So something that has the danger or the risk of causing some kind of a negative trend nationally. So, for example, uh, a question that we're already asking is, when are the arrests happening for the Philippi Training College corruption? 114 million rand that is unaccounted for, and the same commander is still commanding the college. Um, how is that possible? How is it possible that that, that very commander tells police members that um, he will nothing will happen to him and, and if it does he will um, he will bring more down with him you know it, it is simply unacceptable so those types of cases all play uh, a significant role in in causing a risk of having this negative trend throughout the police because if it's happening at Philippi the chances are it's likely happening at other police uh, academies as well so 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 those are, are some of them and then the the third one um, that I believe is is really being a, a an oversight voice for South Africans on the ground. Um, we need to restore the respect of for Parliament and for a committee like the Police Portfolio Committee because um, it's got an immense responsibility and it is something that needs to be used it needs to be used it's constitutionally mandated to do what we are doing and therefore we need to actually use it if i go to a police station and i ask them uh, uh, to see their occurrence book um, uh, as oversight they are not allowed to say no it is my constitutional mandate to do that they, they can't stop me from doing that and that's a very silly example but it is a it's a simple way of doing it and uh and yeah, obviously, Chris, I mean, we'll have a more detailed strategic plan set up within the next three months. Um, uh, as soon as the budgets are done, we'll start planning that and uh, and then get everyone together for a more detailed strategy for the coming five years. We've got a lot of work and it's cut out for us and it's something we need to have patience for and we need to do it, uh, you know, step by step. Now, Ian, are you and the pro previous Minister of Police had a publicly hostile relationship. I sense that that is not going to be the case with the new Minister of Police. No, and and I must really, uh, it's still early days, uh, and and uh, obviously, uh, it to me, I think Minister Senzum Chunu uh, is is a positive appointment so far. Uh, the way that he that he speaks, the way that he conducts himself. Is, is significant in my opinion and um, he's very approachable, he's someone that you can speak with, he's someone that listens he's someone that is interested to hear opinions, advice he's someone that's interested in in understanding better, you know, just before you and I spoke I was on the phone with him and uh, and he immediately uh, you know, he tells me that he, he's desperately trying to spend more time with the police management um, because he needs to get going, you know, he wants to start operating, but he needs to spend quality time to understand where discrepancies are, what what you know, good things and bad things are happening or not happening. Um, 
so so I'm excited about that, and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what he does. Something that stood out to me was the fact that I didn't get the impression that he was trying to be a commissioner. He allowed the the South African Police Service National Commissioner to speak freely, to speak as the commissioner, as the CEO of the police. Um, and that's something that has been missing for the previous years. It was as though ministers think that they are the operational commanders of the police, but they are not. So it's good to see that that the that the function or the role uh, and locations uh, already seem to be better distinguished than what they were before. Ian, what uh, words do you have for a nation that has virtually given up on crime being brought under control? Sure. Um, I think it's a whole day's worth of a discussion. Uh, my uh, my motto, uh, first of all, from a from a faith point of view, is Psalm uh, twenty three four: "Is I will fear no evil." Uh, and the the principle is just even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And uh, so that's that's my my ultimate hope. But apart from that, on a on a more practical level, uh, uh, is that uh, we don't have another alternative. We need to make this work. We've got one opportunity to do it. I wrote a piece this morning saying that it could never, ever be accepted that 85 or more people are murdered every day in this country. And we carry on as though it's okay. It's just another 85. What difference is it going to make? Uh, three children per day. I mean, it's almost three years uh, since Mia Buerta was murdered. I, you and I have spoken about that case so many times, and still no one has been arrested. It simply cannot be. You know, I was going through police reports now uh, earlier today and yesterday in the committee, and I look at crime detection rates are at an all-time low. They're extremely low. Only 14.5% of murders are actually solved in South Africa. So that means nearly 80% of murders are not solved. That is, I mean, that, this is war zone stuff we're talking about. And uh, and we certainly cannot accept that as the norm. And, and again, uh, to me, and I, and this is how I, I, I hope to encourage other ordinary South Africans is to say that, you know, there are, there are many good police members out there. I give them my word. And I know there are a lot of problems in the South African police service. But trust me when I say I know hundreds, if not more of them. I've spoken to thousands of them, and I can honestly tell you that there are people with impeccable integrity in the police, and we need to cherish them, and we need to exhaust every single remedy to our disposal. And if it is a portfolio committee, it is that. If it is a, a civil rights organization, do that. If it's politically, do that too. Do all three if you can, but make sure you exhaust every single remedy to your disposal to cherish the good cops and to fight for your community because their remedies are there. And uh, to me, it's a huge honor to be in a position where um, with this committee of of people that really are dedicated, um, uh, we can we can ask questions that need to be asked and, and we can demand uh, answers. And we can also support the relevant authorities uh, where possible. Thank you, Ian. That was Ian Cameron speaking to Biz News. 